And we are talking about not um, material uh, like water, like something that uh, is that you can touch. We are talking about knowledge, no? The access to knowledge is a, a, a right, a fundamental right, like the access to the water, like the the access to the air. We, we started to think together that maybe also uh, Valle could be, Teatro Valle could be a uh, commonwealth, un bene comune. Don't define bene comune, you fight for them, you defend them and you try to claim more of that, you claim to, to limit the domains of private property and the domains of the public property by the use of this tool that gets political life and becomes very strong in the moment in which it is supported by many people who had their own revolution of the Beni Comune inside of them. Private property has made us so stupid that we only think something is ours when we own it. Which is really an interesting thing, like what would it mean for something to be ours when we don't know it? Like how could we understand uh, that uh, relationship of belonging without a notion of property? I'm here in the Teatro Valle from the beginning, from the 14th of, of June. I, I didn't know no, no one inside here. Uh, I have no personal friends, eh? but I just read on, the, on Facebook some friends of, of, of mine uh, write uh, today at uh, uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon there will be a conferenza stampa because a group of workers of theater in China, they occupy the Teatro Valle. So uh, I, I, I say with myself, what an amazing news. I, I, I was always in love with this theater. The problem is not just the cuts. The problem is that we want to reform a system. And this is what we're trying to do here, mm, uh, living this place as a, as a commons. I invest all my life here in this time, like all the other people that you know here. Mm -hmm. uh, we invested all our life uh, working here, thinking here, sleeping here, eating here, discussing here, uh, meeting people and uh, taking care of this place. Mm -hmm. All the time in the last 
six months. Mm -hmm. mm, this theater was built in the 1727. Hmm? Before of that, there was really, I think, this is, was one of the first public theater open to, to the people. Pirandello, a Sicilian Nobel Prize, uh, had this debut of uh, Sei personaggi in cerca d'autore, uh, six characters uh, looking for the author, <laughs> and, uh, here in uh, this theater, uh, probably uh, Mozart were here, uh, Rossini, Donizetti, uh, Pergolesi in the 70s, and uh, all the greatest uh, contemporary actors and directors came here. So it's a very beautiful theatre and uh, it's uh, one of the most important theatres in all Europe. Uh, in theatre in Italy, you, you go to the theatre, you buy your ticket, you watch the show and you go outside. It, it's not this theatre. Theatre is a, a place in which you, you can go in 10 in the morning and have a tea with a dramatician or a, an actor. You can share your information, share your culture, share your ideas. Uh, it's a place in which you can do workshop, you can improve in what you want to do in your life because this is what I want, I want to do in my life. And at the end of the day, there's a show. At the end of the day, at the end of the work, it's a sh there's a show. The, the real work, it's, it's behind the show. The real work, it's before the show. The real, sh the real show, it's before the show. <laughs> we are uh, uh, thinking, who can manage this theater? Not us, we are artists, we are dancers, actors. It's not our work, no, our job. Now we are doing it, it but in a kind of a political fight is an emergency, is an urgency no, that we are using. When you go to theatre or cinema, you sit down in your chair and you know that I, like uh, in theatre or someone else in cinema, is telling you a story, okay? There is a convention between us. You know that I'm creating a fiction. Mm -hmm. And so you can accept my fiction, but you know that is a creation. With the politic, there is not this convention. Politic and media told you this is the reality. There is no this convention is very incorrect this way mm. so they they win mm. because when you when you look the um, the news the night at your room uh, there is not this convention between you and the television you you sit down and say uh, how let's Let's we see what happened today in the world. Not what we are, what they are telling to me that is happened. If you speak with the normal, with the people now, they say you that they are distant from the politics. What, may, what happens there is not my problem. But <laughs> it's not, <laughs> and maybe if you see the process dur during a performance, you think also this is also mine because I have seen what uh, happens before, and now I have the instrument, the instruments to uh, uh, to know what is the end, and now is in a certain sense also in feeling mine, and uh, it. It could be important that the people think now that everything is our, <laughs> that everything is our problem also. <laughs> and in, in premise politics, the situation of politics. I don't know why, I, I know why, because I am an actress, so I, I know, because theatre is magic. 
uh, in this theater are happen that uh, art, dialogue and communication information become the same the same things. For me it's this. Io leggo l'elenco delle dichiarazioni dei ministri della cultura europei in merito ai tagli alla cultura. Bernd Neumann, Germania. È proprio in tempi di crisi che si deve lottare per non fare tagli alla cultura perché è il valore e il fondamento che dobbiamo mantenere. Frédéric Mitterrand, Francia. La cultura è una risorsa, un aiuto all'orientamento, e io lavoro perché lo sia sempre di più. Angeles González Sinde, Spagna. Lo stimolo alle industrie culturali è cruciale per l'uscita dalla crisi se si tiene conto che la cultura fornisce il 4% del PIL spagnolo e dà lavoro a più di 800.000 persone. Sandro Bondi, Ministro Italiano della Cultura. Non vado a chiedere l'elemosina a Tremonti. Giulio Tremonti, Ministro dell'Economia, è nota la frase, fatevi un bel panino con la Divina Commedia. Etty was um, the national um, theater institution um, of Italy. Actually they just suppressed it from one day to another together with a whole bunch of associations and uh, cultural academies um, in order to get back this little money. Of course this comes from a principle uh, which was one of the most important beliefs of our government and uh, all the governments in general that culture is not uh, giving you money. The culture is not, um, uh, how can we say, improving society on, from an economical point of view. Uh, you don't eat with culture, um, you know, the immaterial as something as, uh, that is just useless. So this hegemonic language and this hegemonic thought um, was the, the basis to, to build this campaign of cuts um, and to inform it in a very strong way for public opinion. So when the Eddie was suppressed, it wasn't this big scandal. These are uncertain times for Italians. The country's debt crisis is perhaps the most severe in the troubled Eurozone and recently forced the government of Silvio Berlusconi from office. With the country's finances in such a dire state, the new Prime Minister, Mario Monti, announced deep austerity cuts which he said were needed to save Italy. Il nostro settore, il settore della cultura, il settore dello spettacolo è stato un settore fortemente colpito dai tagli durante questi anni. Questa è stata anche la causa e la nascita della nostra mobilitazione. E invece noi pensiamo proprio tutto il contrario, pensiamo che, che la cultura non sia un settore marginale ma sia un settore fondamentale soprattutto in un paese come l'Italia che ha il più grande patrimonio artistico e culturale del mondo e dove i lavoratori per lo più lavorano nel settore della cultura, nell'editoria, nella comunicazione e dove non ci sono diritti per nessun tipo di lavoratore, in particolare per chi lavora nel settore della ricerca e della conoscenza. Questi sono i motivi che noi, eh, per cui siamo in piazza anche quest'oggi, è una mobilitazione nazionale che parte da Wall Street, un'altra ce ne sarà per il 17 novembre e questo inizia anche un po' a prefigurare un movimento transnazionale, eh, dalle rivolte del Nord Africa che ci sono state in primavera al movimento studentesco durante quest'anno che ha però coinvolto anche i ricercatori, eh, le università, moltissimi altri settori, anche il nostro, eh, fino alla la Spagna, l'occupazione delle piazze, ma anche il grandissimo movimento in Francia, fino ad arrivare nel cuore diciamo, dell'impero, di quello che è stato l'impero, cioè negli Stati Uniti. E I motivi della, della mobilitazione sono gli stessi per tutti, eh, basta con queste politiche di taglio, di austerità che produco, producono solo eh, povertà, scarsità, eh, tagliano il reddito, tagliano la possibilità del lavoro, tagliano la ricerca, eh, tagliano la possibilità di un futuro, ma anche di un presente per molti di noi. So when I went to the valley, the, there was a still, uh, it was the very beginning of the occupation because at the beginning they thought to stay j just a few days. And uh, I kind of told them and we discussed together that the successful struggles for the common have to last a long time. They have to be physical and very durable. 
not a matter of doing like one day you know, of, of manifestation with a lot of people to, 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 to speak truth to the power. That's not the point. The point is being there, occupying it, making it alive in long periods of time. If you do things that last in time and uh, you organize and structure them, uh, then it becomes a much more effective way to reclaim uh, the political space. 2011's occupation movements are rooted rather than nomadic. In fact, the, the part of the point is that they won't move. And what they do then, in fact, much more effectively than the movements 10 years ago is construct the opportunity for creating new social relationships in miniature, creating new forms of decision making, new forms of organization, as you say, in a multitude mode or in horizontal relationships in uh, decentered or leaderless aspects. It doesn't mean, of course, disorganized. In fact, it poses much more of a much more of a accent on and pressure on creating forms for organization. How to organize the square in in commissions, in um, in decision making procedures, etc. So that's the first aspect I see, which is this rootedness and and the and the focus on an internal organization. The second I see, which I guess is closely related, is a refusal of representation and a and thus a demand for a new democratic form. that we have to do something and that struggle is connected to other little struggle that they are doing in every part of Italy. Uh, there is a, a, an important struggle between the markets and the state and in, uh, in the middle are the people, the normal people that uh, hasn't chosen. In 2005-2007 there were some uh, involvement of a number of scholars including myself about uh, you know the to, to, to come up with a good critical analysis of privatizations on how privatizations really don't work at all in the interest of the people uh, on how actually the impact of privatization is completely opposite to the one that is usually you know proclaimed and uh, and that actually had uh, Pretty big impact in Italy. It was produced. Uh, it produced a, uh, a commission that was the Rodotà Commission at the Ministry of Justice. Uh, it produced a couple of uh, laws uh, in uh, local regions and local governments. It was presented as a statute in uh, in the Senato. So there there, there were some steps forward, and all of these uh, statutes and these ideas uh, used the idea of the commons, of beni comuni, as a legal category. We were trying to develop a legal category that could work as a caution, in a way, against privatization. Uh, the understanding being that, um, very simply taken, uh, you know, if you take, uh, you expropriate private property, you have to show a public interest and you have to pay compensation. If you do the opposite, which is privatizing a common, privatizing public property, uh, you didn't have to show any public interest and you had to pay no compensation to the people. So uh, the relationship between public and private property, we thought it was very unbalanced, technically. Uh, to transfer from the private to the public, lots of constitutional guarantees would be involved. Uh, transferring back, you know, transferring from the public to the private, which is privatization, which is again, you know, a transfer of property. Uh, could happen you know, just out of the normal political process with no constitutional involvement, no possibility to check by the use of the law. And we thought that that was a problem. Okay? Uh, so that's how you know, the idea of the commons was uh, engineered, technically. A defensive notion. It was a defensive notion, something to, to, in order to try to 
limit the wild privatizations and the, uh, that were happening in Italy, you know, beginning in the 90s, uh, to sell away, you know, all the public resources just in order to pay the debt, which is, you know, the process of enclosure I'm talking about. It's huge pressure to take away everything from the community and give it to the banks, basically. Actually, it's a paradox. It's very strange uh, talking about uh, legal occupation. They were all scared of the law, but then they, 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 in writing the statutes and the bylaws of the foundation that we are developing there, we'll talk about that I'm sure later, uh, they understood how uh, creative and interesting and fun is to use the law. The document, the statue of, uh, of the um, foundation uh, that we are already writing is a, is a process that is shared. I mean, uh, we, uh, we did a lot of assembly, open assembly here in the theater, inviting people to uh, build with us this document so everyone could uh, come here and um, participate. Uh, so explaining what they will, uh, will like to, to, to write. And uh, we try to translate this process on the website. So, Ale, Alessandro, uh, built this um, software that uh, is a, a document, online document, uh, where you can go and just to write what you're thinking about, uh, simply a part of the document or the entire document, and you can participate um, writing uh, exactly what. Uh, for you it's wrong, what is to change, what uh, you would add. And uh, so after this process, now we got a uh, version two of the document, and but it's uh, still uh, an open document where everyone can participate. With the Statute of the Valley, what we are doing is we are trying, I really tried very honestly to reflect in legal terms what was going on with the understanding that the moment in which we were doing that we were already putting violence on a practice that is tra that tra changes all the time and therefore we entered in the we entered in the bylaws sort all sort of mechanisms to try to adapt you know to change all the time to really reflect the reality i want the law to reflect the reality not really the reality to, be, to reflect the law we are a community. We, we can take um, as an example this community to write down the stuff. And uh, in this way we can imagine also something that doesn't exist till now. And that's the great stuff that we are, uh, what we are doing here is something special because we are imagining something that till now doesn't exist as directly democracy, as a huge assembly that decides. Uh, Our meetings are open and uh, all the community can come in and uh, speak and uh, vote. In the assembly we use the method of uh, uh, the consenso. That is uh, the method that used the uh, Guarani people and um, it's um, not used anymore, a method that you do not use. Uh, and. Uh, I know why, because it's very hard. It's very hard to take a decision uh, according uh, one, of it, one and each other. It, it's very hard. 15 guys that are, uh, they are the columns. 15, it's not a leader. <laughs> no? And uh, around there are more or less uh, 20 that they support a lot. They are, around other 40 that help and around we have other 50 that help from outside that come uh, when they have possibility. Because uh, we are imagining uh, to build an assembly maybe of, uh, I don't know, 3,000 people, 4,000 people, I don't know. And uh, everyone uh, will participate to one or two or three assembly each year in which uh, they will decide what they want for this theater, uh, what kind of shows, what kind of uh, education, what kind of, uh, um, of direction for this place. Because uh, the theater in a city uh, has got to be um, a crucial part uh, for uh, 
citizens for the city because it's like the um, advanced point that can uh, uh, reach people to something that not already exist uh, is the place where you can imagine something different from from the streets so um, maybe the changing is not uh, only the foundation but the big changing is uh, to change the way that people think about this place and uh, the way they will participate in decisions and uh, we hope not to uh, build a participation only restricted in the theater but maybe in every other public place like hospital or like uh, schools or uh, you know that kind of, of things we hope that people uh, will feel the, the joy to be active part in the life of the city in the life of, of a nation we are uh, the 90-90 percent really but we have to uh, understand that we are the 90-90 percent we have to uh, meet each other we have to talk uh, also on the road also uh, also here everywhere we need to talk because we are the alternative to this <laughs> We have to resist, reclaim, recreate. <laughs>